let's talk about a little bit your time in Japan back then, battle arts, and I'm, I'm sure you have some stories in mind. Did you? Uh, oh, yes, brother, I do. Uh, Japan is an absolutely fascinating country. It is uh, full of wonderful traditions and deeply rooted rituals with uh, a lot of attention to detail. Actually, a certain Japanese sports and wrestling writer that distinguished Mr. Hiroshi Arai knew about me from the 1995 Eurocatch Festival in Bremen. And he's the one uh, who introduced me to battle arts through the then manager Shimada. Okay. After I had left the CWA in 1996, I, Victor Kruger, was the first and only Austrian wrestler ever to be rehired by another wrestling organization right after leaving the CWA. This was unprecedented and must have given big, fat other ones a real headache. <laughs> and that was well-deserved. <laughs> At the time, I did not know where destiny would lead me, but I trained very hard to fight for my right to continue my career. After a couple of months, I received the first postcard from Mr. Arai asking me if I was interested to come to Japan and fight. And when I viewed the in the Western Hemisphere never seen before battle arts fighting style videos for the first time, I knew I had to go there no matter what. Like it was yesterday, I remember showing these tapes to my boxing friend Manfred back then. He was in total awe and gave me the advice to especially train for this certain fighting style for at least another six months. Fuck it, I replied, and took the first flight out to Tokyo, which Bad Lads had arranged for me. Really? Without training? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because I had, I had to go there. After my arrival in Japan, I met the big boss, Mr. Yuki Ishikawa, for the first time at the then original Battle Arts Dojo in Akayamacho, Koshigaya, in the Saitama Prefecture. And most of the fighters, along with the manager, Yushi Shimada, and the Battle Arts lucky cat, Gachiri. Oh, <laughs> I know him. Yeah. The dojo looked like a simple warehouse from the outside, but was very impressive on the inside. Besides a huge sparring ring in the middle, there was special wrestling training equipment, grappling mats and weights, along with the biggest punching bag I've ever seen in my whole life. It was so huge that it had to be supported with steel cables from the building's metal support beams. Do you get that? Yeah. The weight pulled it down to touch the ground. That's how heavy it was. Whew. Okay. Mr. Yuki Ishikawa and I hit it off instantly. He and I were really the same from the foundation of our thinking. Fucking crazy fate attracted us from across half the world. Yuki and I finally became artists with total physical commitment. We were and still are battle artists. He took me into his own apartment house with his wife, his cats Sasuke and Tomato, and his now grown-up son Yoma, who looks exactly like him. Very well done, brother. Good stuff. The very next day, and, this, and despite my jet lag, Toy, so Yuki Ishikawa's nickname, showed me around parts of Tokyo. First, we went to one of the biggest Buddhist temple sites called Kaminari Moron in Asakusa, Taiti city in Tokyo. A very impressive temple, which had a market alley with a lot of different stands to buy traditional Japanese clothing, like hand-stitched kimonos. Various kinds of very cool original Japanese samurai swords and special foods. It was there when the friendly Mr. Ishikawa bought me a, what he said, very famous and sweet Japanese cookie. One could never get from anywhere else in the world. By the way, he smiled at me and knew he was up to something. <laughs> and when I took the first bite, it was hot as hell in my mouth. Uh, but I wanted to show him that I was a tough WCW superstar, continued to eat, but could not finish it because it was so hot, I got really bad hiccups. The only time I had to tap out, giving him the excuse that something was in my watery eyes. <laughs> Yuki just <laughs> laughed his ass off, and after I dried the tears from my face, I was laughing too. <laughs> yeah, from that moment on, uh, we were together all the time. Many times after working out, we went to Izakaya Daiki, together. Izakaya are a very popular and traditional form of gastronomy, gastronomy in Japan. Originally, these were very small, rustic pubs, often no bigger than a cozy living room with low tables for sitting on the cushion floor. Mm -hmm. This place was closed 
by to the Koshigaya train station, actually the Shin Koshigaya station, the next one over. Everything happens going by train in this metropolitan city. Toy also took me to the Yakitori Izakaya, which is a street food stand where we got small skewers of chicken, beef, and cartilage, which is good for your bones. Yeah. I always love Japanese food, which has its focus on being fresh and healthy. And although my big legs could not fit under the tables after the or for the after show parties, <laughs> um, it was more of a get together. Yeah. One time after a bad lot show in the countryside, we took pictures outside the restaurant with the fans. And I remember that Yuki got the prettiest girls to take a photo with. And I had one of the biggest, fattest, ugly girls to lift her up. <laughs> wanted me to lift her up for the picture, you know? And the 300, 300 pound strong man that I was, my male ego did not allow me to deny this heavy burden request. <laughs> but I almost broke my back lifting her up and I had to get a physiotherapeutic massage the next day to get ready for the next time my plates to come. So, okay, that is, was kind of crazy. Now, when I was invited to Japan for the first time, I was booked for two American-style matches. The first event was a smaller one with the reason to promote the bigger show a few days later. It was an open-air event at the big marketplace with a huge funfair of a suburb of Tokyo called Suna Shinden. The weather was sunny and there were a lot of people watching. And that was when I met my soon-to-be Team Extreme tag team partner, Carl Greco Malenko, son of the legendary and sadly deceased Larry Malenko. We were somewhat glad to have found each other to talk to in fluid English and started chatting worse than a sewing, than a sewing circle. Nevertheless, I stayed focused and I did as good of a job as possible. Every performer there put in a great effort and the audience and the organizers were satisfied. The entire Bad Lads troupe was ready for the second, much more important event. This was held in the cult arena Korakuen Hall, right in the big city of Tokyo. This world famous hall was designed to hold around 2,500 spectators and was fully booked all year round with various martial arts and wrestling events, which were usually, usually sold out. Understandably, the management of Bad Lads was concerned that we could compete with the larger and more traditional organizations in terms of attendance. However, I did not let the nervousness get to me and perform to my best as I did at all the other events. Although it was a relatively short distance into the city, we boarded the bus along with the other Battle Arts fighters that would take us there early in the afternoon. Carl and I passed the time reminiscing about our careers and tales from American wrestling. Time flew by for us, and we had already arrived in the front of the hall. Tokyo is a huge city with a corresponding lack of parking spaces. Every building in the city itself has its own underground parking. Mm -hmm. So we drove down into the garage <clears throat> on one of the lowest levels from where we had to take an elevator up to our hall. A lot of fans had already arrived and wanted to catch a glimpse of us. The bus had not even really come to a standstill when a veritable storm of camera flashes descended on our vehicle. Carl, that's freaking crazy, man, I remarked, a little surprised. I was already used to quite a bit of a fanfare from America and then later from Europe, but this surpassed anything that I've ever seen before. Yo, Vic, you have seen nothing yet, bro. Just wait until we get in there. I'm telling you, they go nuts for the sport over here. <laughs> well, the battle arts manager Shimada came rushing towards us from the front of the bus and asked me to hide my face until I had made my official entrance into the hall I complied with his request and covered my head with a large towel from my luggage which was then taken by the changing, to the changing rooms by the young boys Mysteriously, I followed them without showing my face and Then it was go time the gates of the hall opened, and to everyone's delight, the hall was filled with spectators in no time. There were so many of them that they also had to find space on the balcony on the upper floor. Hey, it's Corker Hall. Yeah. Just now, I also felt a little nervous, which I used as additional motivation for my performance. My opponent, 
that evening was Mr. Shuichi Sho Funaki, now WWF superstar. He was a small but a very experienced Japanese shoot style fighter for bad lords. Later in his career, he became a professional wrestling manager, color man, commentator, and former professional wrestler signed to the WWE, where he is a one-time cruiserweight champion and a one-time hardcore champion. He was introduced first in that hall and was already in the ring when my entrance music with the ominous classical title O Fortuna by Carl Orff sounded yeah. through the hall. The spectators waited anxiously for my appearance, and uh, I took my time. This increased the tension of the audience, and the astonishment was all the greater when I turned the corner into the auditorium, showing my giant appearance. I even stopped for a moment to let the fans take a good look at me, scanning even the spectators on the balcony. Slowly, but with mighty steps, I approached the squared circle and entered the ring over the top rope, where my opponent, opponent was already waiting with the referee. Funaki did not let up on you know, about my strong physique, even when I stood up in front of him in my full height. On the contrary, he took another step forward toward me and stretched his chest, filled with pride, without fear. That is the Japanese fighting spirit. Yeah. For the audience, it was an awesome sight. Uh, when his face only reached up to my chest. <laughs> we gave them a great show, uh, just with the big uh, versus little man wrestling actions. After the introduction of the fighters by the ring announcer, the match was officially opened. From the beginning, I seek to knock down my smaller opponent in a brutal manner. Yeah. But he also always escaped in the last second, giving the Japanese crowd hope and something to live for. Hell, he even slipped underneath my thigh, my high boot, just to climb up on the top rope and in a blink of an eye for a double boot kick to my chest. Man, that was awesome. Yeah, and that is what the people liked. Obviously impossible for me as a big man to get my hands on him. I was getting angrier by the minute. <laughs> a classical bout and a nice story, especially told for this particular audience. But in the end, I caught him with a devastating clothesline, which laid him out really good for my first time ever shown in Japan finish move, the Victor Bomb. My special move started as a regular power bomb, hoisting my opponent up into the air and holding him high above my shoulders before slamming, slamming him down into the mat hard. I executed this wrestling technique perfectly. Sho landed right on his upper back like I had been taught by my teachers in the WCW not to hurt my opponent. The professional that Mr. Funaki was made him sell this frightful looking crash to his maximum potential. Still trying to get up with shaking hands and knees, unsuccessfully trying to pull himself by the ropes, he put on the greatest acting performance which made the whole arena suffer along with him until the final count of 10 for the big man's win. After a mere five minutes and seven seconds, my introduction into the Japanese wrestling business was perfect. Mm -hmm. 